Welcome to the channel Learn with Danish. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. Hello all. So in the previous video we had discussed uh, Alexander Pope, uh, the major writer of the neoclassical age and his uh, way of writing principles. In this video we would be concentrating on a particular section of his poem titled as Essay on Man. It is a philosophical poem that was written by Alexander Pope in the years 1733 and 34. It is prescribed for the second semester BA English language and literature students of the University of Calicut. It is a philosophical poem in narration and it was dedicated to his friend St. John Bullenbrook. The opening line of episodes 1 section 1 is Awake St. John. The whole poem is written in four episodes. Alexander Pope began writing this poem in the year 1729 and it was in the year 1733 that he finishes the first three episodes and gets the three episodes published. The fourth episode was published uh, the following year in the year 1734 that is why we have in our text uh, written essay on man 1733 34 33 3 episodes was published 34 the fourth episode was published and uh, it was written to vindicate the ways of god to men I think you might be familiar with a similar kind of statement that was made earlier in the video. It is a similar statement to Milton's uh, Paradise Lost where Milton justify the ways of God to men. As you all know it is divided into four episodes and we have got uh, the first episode section 2 to, to be discussed. So As you all know Pope was a Roman Catholic and a firm believer of Christianity and uh, he was living in a time when science was reaching its peak he was living in the time of Isaac Newton Newtonian theory was at its peak science was getting prominent in the mindset of all human beings and uh, there are uh, two works basically of pope that discusses uh, the optimistic philosophy or the ethic system that he wished to inculcate in his readers and uh, his work uh, moral epistles and essay on man were designed to be a part of this ethic system that pope wanted to convey through poetry Talking about science Alexander Pope belonged to a time when science was progressing in a rapid extent we see that uh, newtonian theories were progressing to a great extent and uh, everything in the world was understood uh, through science and logical uh, reasoning as a roman catholic and a firm believer of christianity pope stresses on the fact that we should not debase spirituality in front of science and both are different kinds of realms in which we need to explore more uh, he talks about man's relationship with himself in the poem that we got to study that is episode 1 section 2 According to Pope uh, he says that man must accept that whatever is right and everything that is in the universe is basically right there is a kind of popularized optimistic philosophy of life that is conveyed through the poem the french writer voltaire commented that it is the most beautiful the most useful the most sublime didactic poem ever written in any language though we see that voltaire and rousseau had appreciated the poem in detail at the early stage of their life but later on in their works like candide voltaire uh firmly criticized uh, the uh, irrationality of pope's philosophy of life so let's just get into the poem essay on man episode 1 section 2 that's prescribed for the second semester ba english language and literature students of university of calicut i would be discussing the poem in in by taking in two lines each It is written in heroic couplet a, cup, a heroic couplet is a two line poem 
and it is used generally in uh, narrative and epic poems it was uh, introduced by geoffrey chaucer in english literature and later on uh, uh, was mastered by john dryden and alexander pope himself so let us just get into the poem the first two lines presumptuous man the reason would so find why formed so weak so little and so blind he begins the poem by addressing man as presumptuous presumptuous is a behavior or an attitude of man which fails to admit uh, limitations or we can say that a presumptuous man fails to admit his or her limitations in life so man is a being that is actually having certain limitations there is no concept like a perfect man wherein you have all the knowledge in the world wherein you have all the skills in the world so man is represented in a rank as i told earlier alexander pope was a firm believer of roman catholicism and he stresses on the point of the great chain of being which was uh, prevalent in medieval christianity in the great chain of being which is headed by god man comes in the third position that is after angels god angels and then human beings then you have plants and animals so there is a hierarchy system that is there for beings or species in the universe man is all the time thinking that he knows everything but in fact he has certain limitations and he fails to understand his limitations so he knows that man would find a very good reason why formed so weak so little and so blind and man is all the time thinking that he is good for nothing he doesn't god has done me wrong and uh, god is not with me he has uh, not put me in the correct position in life i have worked so hard and nothing is coming in my way I, why i am so weak so little and so blind so he is asking a rhetorical question here why form so weak so little and so blind now next couplet first if thou canst the harder reason guess why formed no weaker blinder and no less so before you find an answer to the question that is been asked in the first couplet let us just think of why you are in that position itself you could be more weaker compared to the present situation so just think of that fact that there are people lower than you who are troubled who are really suffering in their life why haven't you reached that position so why think of that okay before answering the question just think of that then he's coming to the next couplet ask of thy mother earth why oaks are made taller or stronger than the weeds they shade now he's trying to tell Uh, the reader or the presumptuous man you could ask the mother earth now he is telling to ask the mother earth mother nature why oak oak is a huge tree so the grasses underneath the oak tree or the weeds underneath the oak tree are shaded by this oak tree and it is oak tree which is called taller or stronger but it is exposed to sunlight there is nobody to shade those oak trees why is that made like that so is there any kind of injustice done to the oak trees and the weeds compared or ask of yonder argent fields above why jove satellite are less than jove now he is telling to ask uh, the argent fields above argent field in the sense argent is something that is silvery or shiny right argent fields above means he is uh, presumably talking about the skies above now just ask the sky just ask the space why jove satellites are less than jove why jove jove is jupiter jupiter is considered to be the largest planet in the universe that we are living so jupiter has got satellites just like any other planets and why these satellites are smaller than jupiter just ask the space so aren't they discriminated based on their strength 
So coming to the second stanza he tries to find uh, the answer slowly slowly of systems possible if tis confessed that wisdom infinite must form the best so we need to understand there is a system for everything and that is confessed right there is a system for everything and that wisdom infinite must form the best so everybody wishes to have complete knowledge and complete knowledge is the best thing the wisdom infinite must form the best so there should be a system of knowledge where all must full or not coherent be and all that rises rise in due degree so you need to take that wisdom to your full but it should be constantly taking in rather you cannot get one gulp all of a sudden right it should be coherent and that wisdom should be taken up level by level there should be a rise and there this rise will be attained to a certain degree so my knowledge would be different from your knowledge like that it would be different from others knowledge so knowledge is something that's given in different degrees to different individual then in the scale of reasoning life it's plain there must be somewhere such a rank as man so if you understand that knowledge is given in different different uh, degrees we can understand in the scale of reasoning that there is something called man in a certain rank so he's talking about the great chain of being here the great chain of existence so man is actually below angels and above plants and animals so he has got limitations of being an angel or god and uh, he is more superior than animals and all the question wrangle ever so long is only this if god has placed him wrong so whatever questions that has been asked right from the start of the poem why am i so weak that's a question basic question so he is just complaining he is complaining to god that god has placed him wrong the only question that comes to your mind is god has done something wrong to me god has placed me wrong so respecting man whatever wrong we call may must be right as relative to all if you think that god has wronged us then basically you should change your mind because whatever you think is wrong is actually right because god has already understood man and he has given man according to his limitations in humble works though labored on with pain a thousand movements cause one purpose gain so whenever man works very hard to earn his living he works with pain he works with a great labor and all the thousand movements thousand movements indicate the mechanisms of man every time we are working thousands of time we are working thousands of second for just getting a small gain in life we are just working to to just improve to a certain bit in life but in god's one single can its end produce yet serves to second to some other use but for god for him kun fire kun that is be and let it be for him it can end with one single move what we assume to work in thousands god can do it in one movement so god is a one who can end whatever he thinks to end or he can begin whatever he thinks to begin and uh, yet serves to second to some other use so what does he do he does not do that he does not come into the armageddon or the judgment day all of a sudden he gives man kind of chance coming to the next couplet so man who here seems principle alone perhaps acts second to some sphere unknown so that is the point so what is man thinking because of science because of technology advancement man thinks that he has achieved everything in this world so man who here seems principle alone principle alone means who is considering himself to be the most knowledgeable the most divine or the most knowing species in the world he is standing maybe 
above god that is what the situation of man is all about alexander pope even though he has written this poem some 300 years back the present situation of the world is a prime example of this fact man has thought that uh, he has succeeded everything he has developed all science and all technologies but still what is the case right now everybody is in their home stay safe stay at home nobody is going to work nobody is worried about money they are all worried about their life so he thinks that he he was thinking that he has achieved everything in life but this virus this small virus has caused him to realize that man is just a small being for almighty so he should know that there is something above him he might be second a sphere unknown indicates god's presence the divine presence so you should not think you are all knowing you should not think that you are all able in every skills of life so there is limitations touches some wheel or verges to some goal this but a part we see and not a whole even though man assumes that he has achieved many many uh, victories in the world he has invented many many things in the world but still he should realize that whatever inventions he is making whatever the scientific discoveries that he is making whatever technological advancement he is making it is just a part of a big whole so see corona virus is a pandemic right now and we are in search of vaccination so man is just tackling corona virus now when he finds the vaccination of corona virus maybe let me pray to god that it doesn't happen but maybe in the later stage there would be some other kind of virus that would be attacking us and we would be going behind uh, inventing the vaccination for that virus so every time man invents or man tend to discover or man to tend to advance in science and technology we see that it is just a part that we are seeing not the complete whole the part of wisdom that man is bound to it is not the whole wisdom as such. a man cannot have the complete wisdom of the universe it is only one can have that what is that who is that it is god the divine being so he should consider himself to be lower or limited in existence so let's just get into the next stanza when the proud steed shall know why man restrains his fiercy course or drives him over the plains now he's coming up with an example of a steed steed is a riding horse a horse is considered to be a very strong animal muscular who is having a very good running skill so man is the one who is actually controlling that horse when he is riding his horse his fiery course his running or drive gives him over the plains even though we see that the horse is actually stronger than man but the man controls over the horse while he is riding the horse over the plains next uh, he talks about the dull ox when the dull ox why now he breaks the clod is now a victim and now egypt's god now talking about the ox that we plow the field clod means we are plowing the field who now he breaks the clod he is breaking the mud inside that when when he is plowing the field he is now a victim where he is plowing the fields of men and in certain areas like egypt it is considered to be god we see that ox is considered to be the first uh, animal god in egypt it is called apis i think hapa so we see that at the same time ox is considered to be a god in egypt and uh, ox is considered to be something that can be utilized that can be exploited uh, in the fields also so he's a victim he's a slave as well as a deity then shall man's pride and dullness comprehend now he can understand oh, why man should be proud of himself and why man can be dull of himself his actions passions beings use and end now he can understand now why he should be proud of his existence of his passions of his being and why he can be dull of these things again why doing suffering checked impelled and why this hover a slave the next a deity so he can we can very well understand that uh, nobody is uh, remaining 
in a in a position that they wish to remain for very long for example ox was considered to be a god in the ancient times but after that it is a just an animal where we used to plow a field similarly horse is considered to be a very strong animal but when it comes to riding it is just a mere slave in front of human beings so man is also that man can be god man when he invents when he invents his passion when he tries to discover his passions or energy inside him we see that he is achieved or he is in the edge of that height but in fact it is not that it is just a part of the life that is playing on and on so he might be a deity one day he might be a victim one day we should understand that man is not completely perfect as god then say not man is imperfect heaven in fault sin rather man's as perfect has he ought so don't say that don't ever say that you are imperfect at heaven in fault heaven in fault in a sense god has done something wrong to you but say rather man is as perfect as he ought he in the sense god ought so god has already decided certain criteria for different individual or different human beings in general so everybody has got its own way of living by the will of god what god intended as such his knowledge measured to his state and place his time a moment and a point his space so everybody has got different knowledge about different things my knowledge cannot be compared to your knowledge so everybody has got a uh, knowledge in a measured state and place so knowledge is different for everybody so every species in this world has got a rank in itself if to be perfect in a certain sphere what matters soon or late or here or there so if you want to be perfect in a certain sphere what matter soon or late or here or there whether you are in a very dull position or whether you have achieved your goals there is nothing called perfectness perfection is not a thing that can be counted on everything can lower everything can heighten also so whatever is it is just a matter a physical thing the blessed today is as completely so as who began a thousand years ago so pope uh, concludes the second section of episode 1 by saying that people who are blessed today are in a similar manner blessed a thousand years ago that is we should consider ourselves our life to be perfect in the same manner that the past people the ancient people consider their lives to be perfect we should not assume that we are imperfect rather we should be satisfied with the present situation that we have in our life we should not think that god has created us for no good use so i hope that uh, you have understood uh, the poem in detail if you have any doubts or queries related to the poem or the author as such please drop in your comment in the comment box till then it's me danish signing off have a good day learn with danish